let's just say hypothetical. They're not taking steroids. What, what do you think their body would look like? Howdy do, gentlemen and ladies. Just freshly back from the 2023 CrossFit Games. Always a good time. Always a good time going to the games. That's my third time going to the Madison, Wisconsin CrossFit Games. I live in California, and I never went to it when it was in Carson. However, I love it at Madison. I don't know where it's going to be at next year, but rumor has it, the two that I keep hearing the most, Nashville and Austin, Texas. We'll see. I think both of those would be a good spot. I do love it in Madison. Everybody always says it too. It definitely feels like a good, like, man, when, when you're there in Madison, the CrossFit Games is there, it's like that whole freaking city is just like CrossFit focused. Like, we're, I think it was driving down the freeway and they just have like, you know, these digital signs. This was probably like 20 minutes from the, from the arena. But they had like this, every day they had like a, a leaderboard update on the screen. And then, uh, of course, you know, everybody around the Madison area, like there's, you know, Rogue and stuff. But man, and the restaurants have like CrossFit Games themed food or, you know, whatever uh, focused. So it's just cool that everybody like kind of gets in the spirit. So I do love that about Madison. Now, hopefully, you know, wherever they go, hopefully you can kind of somewhat replicate that. Because that's pretty awesome uh, when you go there. It's just like you're just like immersed in CrossFit everywhere. Um, this episode, I'm just going to kind of give you my experiences, what I experienced at the CrossFit Games, get a little firsthand shenanigans. Also, I want to like go over to some of the male and female side of, um, you know, kind of surprises. And then also we'll go through some of the, some of the workouts, just kind of touch bases on a few of them. We'll keep it light. We'll keep it lighthearted. It won't get too, too crazy. You know, there's other podcasts that get, that get loco on the in-depth stuff, but, uh, we'll just try to make this fun, right? First off, how much Jocko juice did you guys drink? Dear God, I had so many effing Jocko goes. I was pissing Jocko juice, 100%. I guarantee I was urinating Jocko juice. There was no doubt. And uh, I also tried uh, Colton Merton's sponsor, uh, the Cowbell, that purple can. Friggin' delicious. I love the Cowbell. That was, that was money. That was money. And I'm just like, it's funny, I don't... I. Don't eat very much when I'm there, but I'm like constantly just drinking liquids, like because you know everybody's hands them out. Like I don't know how many fit aids I had. I kept going over to the Paper Street booth slash Good Dudes booth. By the way, are they like what's up with that? Are they are they the same company now? Do they buy they buy each other out or one buy the other's company? I don't know. But uh, I kept getting their cans of coffee, uh, fit aids, cowbells, jock. Oh, so many jockos, too many jockos, too many jockos. I'm sick and tired of Jocko right now. Um, speaking of food, man, good luck trying to get an acai bowl unless you're unless you're cool waiting in line for like forty five minutes. What is up with the acai bowl and the CrossFit CrossFitters? Damn, guys, love your acai bowls. I mean, I love acai bowls too, but dear God, I mean, if you guys are there. Those who were there, you guys know what I'm talking about because they got the they got the uh, little vendor thing outside, you know, like the outside right in front of the North Park uh, Stadium, but also the one inside the arena. Same thing, dude. It was the lines are crazy, crazy ass lines. By the way, I got home as soon as I got home. Sick. Actually, before I left, I was kind of like sick. Got home, got super sick. So. I'm still a little under the weather, but I'm fighting through. Could go for some Jocko. I bet you Jocko would have cured me right now. Kind of like a little flu type of thing. Kind of had some sweats, some shivers. Um, by the way, it's just like a bitch and moan. American Airlines. God dang it. You guys suck. Okay, I'm just throwing it out there. American Airlines, you guys suck. Every time I travel with them, <laughs> there's a freaking delay. <sighs> and I, no shit, the three... The last three times went to the games, all three times that coming back home, they've gotten delayed. And they gotten delayed so much where I miss my connection flight and I have to stay the night and then come home the next day. Three times in a row now. Really chapped ass. And, this, and the other day, this particular most recent one, I had a three hour window between my, you know, my connection things. And they pushed it back an hour, then it was delayed a second hour. And it was delayed a third hour, and I was like, 
Going to be cutting it close. Anyways, my plane lands, and I missed my connection flight by seven minutes. Yep, so I had to stay the night and get up in the morning and do all that crap. And I was not feeling well and all that shit, so anywho. Another funny little, uh, by the way, tons of fans. Guys, I'm so glad you guys, all of you came up to me and said hi. That was rad. Never, ever feel, or just never, ever, like, just know that I'm always like, yeah, come up and say hi. I always want, I always want to say hi to you guys. So don't, don't ever think you're bothering me. Because a lot of people always say, like, sorry. You know, when they come up, like, sorry, sorry, can I get a picture? Sorry. I'm like, don't say, you know, say sorry. Um, it's very flattering. And, like, the only time I ever get any kind of attention is when I go to, like, a CrossFit event. So it's not that I, not that, like, every day of my life I'm getting uh, bombarded. <clears throat> um, yeah, one one dude came up to me. And he's making eye contact, right, across the way. And I could see, I could see, like, he, you know, you can just tell. You can tell that he kind of like you know recognizes me, so he keeps you know, so he starts beelining it to me, and he gets he comes up to me, shakes my hand, he gets really close, and he kind of gets wide eyed, and he gets closer, and he's all, "How big is your penis?" <laughs> he starts crackling, laughing. Thought it was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious too because it kind of caught me off guard. Um, and you know, with the content I put out there, I'm not like hey, I'm kind of asking for it. Anyway, I thought it was hilarious. He thought it was funny. It was it was kind of caught me off guard. The guy asked me how big my schlong was. Um, also with the um, I got a uh, you know, I'm better than you bracelet for a press because I'm a journalist, and um, I wish man, I got I guess I had the lowest uh lowest on the totem pole access because man, I could not get on the freaking I got I got behind the um. You know, I got like the little inside barrier on the North Park, but they wouldn't let us down. Or they wouldn't let me down in the pit area for the arena. But they used to let us. They used to let, uh, you know, press, whatever bracelet I had. I used to be able to go down there, but they wouldn't let us go this time. Um, But, I, you know, yours truly, a little sneaky sneaky. I, uh, you know, I, I, got my way, I got my way down there. But, anyway, but when I was down there, I was like, there is so many freaking... Like, okay, I know the Buttery Bros were doing the behind the scenes. I know Craig Ritchie was. I know Savon was. But they're like, besides those, there's probably like, I feel like there's like 10 other groups or teams all with cameras and, and uh, getting like, you know, content behind the scenes stuff. And I'm like, oh my Lord, like these, as soon as these athletes come off the floor, they are like, they're they're all swarmed and then just have a camera in their face. I think the whole time they're not competing because everybody's trying to get the, you know, kind of like behind the scenes uh, content stuff. So I think with the increase of that is why, uh, you know, like my bracelet stuff is limited as far as like access stuff. But geez, I was like, man, I even even if I had access, I'd feel like kind of bad if I go up in front of them because there's just so many people. Like they're you know, they, they would walk off, somebody get in their face, and as soon as they're done, like uh, you know, with the camera in their face, the next team or company would come up <laughs> with the camera. And start asking, you know, this is like these these athletes athletes had no breaks from from any kind of like, you know, behind the scenes interview questions going on. Uh, oh, like Talk Elite Fitness was down there. I think Morning Chalk Up was down there. Anyways, I'm not even kidding. There was probably like, there's there was legit like ten to fifteen different you know teams down there. It was constant. Uh, so I mean, man, these, uh, I think uh, there's a clip of Madero's Madero saying like. I don't care, you know, they don't care that they're, you know, they interview me, but everybody's asking the same questions all the time, especially Justin, you know, poor guy. They fucking, that guy's probably got asked, literally asked us to the same stuff, like different versions of like, what's happening, buddy? What's, what's going on? What's wrong? So I could see, uh, I could see how that could be annoying for the athletes. Um, yeah. So I don't know if there's like. Is that good or bad? I don't know. I feel like like good and bad. Like I, you know, I love the content, and I love like, I love the stuff like Craig Ritchie and Buttery Bros, and um, I'm sure Savon is gonna put out. It's gonna be freaking badass. Um, but man, I feel like there needs to be, there needs to be dialed back a little bit because man, there's like just too, there's too much, and I think, um, I think you're not gonna get. Well, I don't know. I was gonna say I think you're not gonna get. Because there's so many people, there's so many companies asking these athletes, so, like constant, constant interviewing them, constant questions. You're probably going to not get that 
great of uh, responses back. But I don't know. Is that? I didn't really think that one through. That's just kind of my initial reaction. That's kind of what I think. I think that's what, I mean, for me, you know, if somebody's asking me a question and I'm on to like the fourth person asking me the same question, I'm probably going to be like, okay, dude, I'm over this. Stop asking me questions. So anyways, um, I guess, I guess I'm just starting, I'm thinking about how it looks like now. And then if I go back to like when Savon was first doing it, like back in the day, you know, it was, it seemed like it was almost just him. There wasn't really else there. I mean, you know, there might've been a couple other uh, cameras, but if you look at like the 2014, 15, 16, 17, that kind of stuff, there wasn't like that as many like cameras and videos now there is today. It's like unreal. Anywho, that's just one thing I noticed when I was down there, when I snuck down there, when I was like not, by the way, I snuck down there, right? And I was like walking and walking around and then finally somebody comes up and they're like, uh, do you only have like pink bracelet? And I said, no. And he's like, what other bracelet do you have? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I lost it. He's all, yeah, get the hell out of here. I'm like, damn it. All right, dude. He's like, how'd you even get down here? I'm like, how about you not worry about it, Carlos? I think his name was Carlos. How about you not worry about it, chief? Anyways, he gave me the, gave me the fucking boot. Um, yeah, man, I wish they would, uh, I wish they would have announced where that's, where it's going to be at next year. I know I'm not alone there. I wish they would, I hate, I, I think they, I think they're going to wait a couple weeks. I don't know. It's either... They don't want to, I don't know why they didn't announce it. I'm thinking my, my initial reaction is they, maybe they don't have it like, um, finalized yet. So maybe that's not why they're, they haven't announced it, but, um, yeah, I'm hope I'm thinking Nashville or Austin. Ooh, what if it's like Canada? Cause Canada freaking kicked ace at the games. They cleaned house. It was like so many freaking Canadians up on those podiums. Uh, Toronto, Vancouver, maybe. Vancouver would be kind of cool. I could see it being Vancouver. That'd be, I don't know. I don't know see how that goes. That'd be pretty awesome, though. Hopefully Vancouver, because it's more, like, closer to me. Toronto, that'd be a long-ass flight. So. Uh, oh, one thing, too. Jeez, by the way. I don't know if you guys saw one of my posts, but that I just did recently about how emotional the games were. Dear Lord, I'm not even kidding you. Ever since having kids, by the way, I've, been t- I've turned into, like, a huge softie. So, like, it doesn't take much to, like, break me. And I'm pretty good at, like, you know, I get emotional. I don't, I don't like, full-on, like, you know, start weeping. But, man, I get the I get the swell in the eyes and I get the choked up. And, like, I, you know, I take a lot of, like, strength to keep it in. Because, man, I'm there's so many times I wanted to freaking cry. So many times I wanted to cry. I couldn't believe it. I was like, dear Lord. And, like, one of the first times was uh, uh, at the press conference. I think it was day, t- it was either day, I think it was day two, maybe it was day one, I can't remember, but on the panel was Dave Castro, uh, Alexis Raptus, Emma Lawson, uh, Chandler Smith, and Roman, and I think, I don't, I don't know what the question was, but Roman answered it, and he was, you know, and then the, his translator was translating it, but he said something along the lines of, you know, when I was at 2014, 2015, sitting in my room watching the watching the open announcements, I never dreamt I was just gonna be in this position. He's I just want Dave to know that I've always looked up to him and he's like my role model and he inspires me to be a better person and all this stuff. And like even Dave, Dave was ready to start like crying. And I was like, Man, you can break Dave. That's pretty good. It's pretty good if you could break Dave down, because Dave is a god dang robot. Um, uh, but yeah, Dave was getting choked up. He had to get out of his chair and like hug them and stuff is super sweet so even that moment i was like jeez i'm gonna i'm gonna freaking start crying and then like somebody (laughs) somebody asked dave a question i don't think he wanted to answer and he's all yeah i don't know about that but hey guys look over there there's matt frazier and matt frazier is walking trying to like sneak by everybody (laughs) and so uh dave pointed him out and then of course matt got freaking swarmed it's hilarious it's like one of the funniest things i've seen dave do He's not usually, usually Dave, I don't know how, da- how Dave's uh, sense of humor is, but he doesn't strike me as somebody has a good sense of humor. But yeah, it was funny. He's like, hey guys, look, there's Matt Frazier. Um, yeah, the uh, freaking Justin Madero's getting choked up in the beginning. You know, I think day after at the end of day one, that freaking got me. Uh, yeah, Ellie Turner, that guy, that was choking me up too. She was like trying to fight through the pain. I, I was watching her too, that, that event uh, before she kind of like, um, 
what was it before? Um, gosh, let me think. Hold on. What was it? Um, Helena? Yeah, Hel Helena. The vent before Helena, the ski bag, the um, the sandbag thing. I could tell she was like, I think she placed well in that event. But man, she, her her position that she was holding that sandbag on her back and squatting, it looked all funky. And so I think when she finally finished and shut up on the got up on the stage, she's in, she even said like she looked, first of all it looked like something was wrong, and then I think she was even like saying like yeah I have my back up. So, um, yeah, her finishing that. What else? Of course, Roman. Jeez, Roman got me too. He's like, I just want to be like a hero to my son or whatever. I want to be, I want to just show like keep working hard. Like that got me. Um, it didn't choke me up, but he, but um, Laura, her like I liked her Barbie comment. I think that was great. I think that's good that you know to make those statements. I, I like that she did that. Um, yeah, it's, you know it's it's. A lot of people make comments on Laura Horvath's Laura Horvath's body. It's just ignorance, you know. It's just ignorance, you know. You know, it's. We yeah. You, you hope people know by now. You're never gonna make everybody. You're not gonna. Not everybody's gonna like you. Not everybody's gonna find you attractive. Not everybody's gonna say nice stuff to you. It's just like that's the way it goes. But um, yeah, Laura Horvath is like, she's freaking ripped. Uh, by the way, speaking of that too, one of the posts I did uh, when I, you know, I do the filter on the face, but I was just looking at, I was looking at some of the uh, comments in the, uh, in the post and somebody like, cause it's, I, okay. So for, for those who don't know, I did the filter, a face filter on the, all the girls coming through across the finish line on the North park. And I put like a little compilation together. Anyways, people are saying like, oh, they're all on steroids. All these girls are PEDs. Look at all these girls. Like, where are the girls at? These all look like dudes, you know, like all these comments and stuff too. Granted, I don't know. I don't know if they're taking roids. I don't. I have no idea. However, what what would you expect a female to look like who is working out like three times a day, six days a week, seven days a week, constantly for year after year after year? If let's just say hypothetical, they're not taking steroids. What what do you think their body would look like? If again, if they're working out three times a day eating right, recovering right, year after year after year, like they're going to, they're going to have muscle. <laughs> they're going to have muscle. So it's like, you know, I don't know. Of course, of course you can, there's, there's pe people taking roids. I know there is, this is, I'm not, I'm not naive and I'm not dumb, but like, that's so, I know these female CrossFitters get these comments all the time. And that would just be my question back to him was like, what do you, what do you think their bodies, what, or what do you expect their bodies to look like of a, or what do you expect a female's body to look like who's working out, uh, you know, two to three times a day, four or five days, six days a week for years and years and years. What do you, what would you, do you think, do you think they're not going to be ripped? Do you think they're not going to have muscle? This is kind of weird. It's just weird. That's like always the, and I know it's just troll, you know, a lot of times it's just trolls too, but. I also know a lot of people believe that shit too. A lot of people think that they're all like all these CrossFit girls are all on roids, but anyways, I just thought that was kind of annoying. Yeah. I, I, I can only imagine what some of these popular CrossFit athlete girls go through all the freaking time. Super annoying. That's why you just can't, you know, you got to block out the haters, right? You got to block out the freaking haters. Um, let's see. Oh, do we like the cuts? I know I might not be in the minority here, but I, I I like the cuts, man. I liked the cuts. I thought it was good. I thought there was either six events and then there was cuts. I thought that was pretty good. I thought the events that they did run to kind of get a good base um, were good too. Were, those were those were uh, those. I think there was enough tests to get you get a good understanding of who were the top like thirty were, and then three more to get the top twenty. I don't know. I like the cuts. I like them, especially as a spectator. I, I hate watching, I hate watching heat after heat after heat all the time. Um, you know, it's just me being selfish. But that's just how I like. So I, I like it. I like the cut. And plus, the, you know, on day the last day, how you have everybody on the North Park kind of going at the same time. I love that too, because then it's so, it's from like a again from a spectator from a visual standpoint. Like you know, it's there's not a bunch. There's not there's only one heat, so 
whoever's crossing the line first is the winner and second and third and so on. So I, I love, I love that part of it too, where you just get like a good, it's a good, uh, it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. So I'd be like, Ooh, and that, cause usually I'm watching, I'm like, okay, I got to look at their time and got to compare and stuff. And I don't know. This is so, like I said, I think it's, it's small, but I like it. I like the cuts. Um, let's see what else. Uh, Oh, at the, um, on that Monday after the games, I went to CrossFit Mojo. That place is pretty cool. What a cool little gym. Did a badass workout. Uh, snatched 190. My max is 195, so snatched 190. And then I did my first ever cold plunge. Um, Shit was cold, guys. I know, breaking news. Shit was cold. I first got hit. <laughs> I just kept dropping F-bombs. I was like, F, this is F and cold. And I was like, I was, I think I was in for like maybe eight seconds. And I was like, I can't, I'm not going to do this. This is, this is ridiculous. This is like, I can't keep doing this. And finally I just like sucked it up and I went all the way in. And then I can't remember where I heard it, but some, something I read about, like you need to put your, you know, you need to go full submerge and get your head under the water too. Cause I think it's something about like, you know, a lot of people get there in their neck or their, you know, their heads above the water. But if everything else is cold, I think your your you know your upper your head and stuff's warm then like can give you like headaches i don't know i just heard it's better to go i don't even know where i heard it from now so anyways i sucked it up went all the way under uh and i was freezing that it's weird it's such a weird feeling because like you you like i can't i literally couldn't feel my legs i had to like pull myself out of the plunge hold on to the side for like you know my legs to kind of get feeling back in uh, so I waited like, so I was in, I was in there for a minute, got out for about 20, 30 seconds. And I jumped back in the second time I jumped back in, it wasn't, wasn't nearly as bad. I was like, like a 50% improvement. So that was cool. My first experience with the cold, cold plunge. It was freaking cold. I, I did like it, man. I just, it was a shock. It was a shock to the system. Um, so yeah, anyways, CrossFit Mojo is cool. Oh, and when we were leaving, uh, Gabby Magawa was there with, uh, her boo, which I didn't even know her boyfriend was freaking Laura's, uh, brother. Didn't even know that. And then, uh, so he was there too. And I think Laura was coming, but then we didn't, we didn't really stick around. We just bounced. But yeah, highly recommend that gym. Super cool gym. Super cool gym. I'm trying to think of anything else to really like. It was cool just meeting everybody. Man, I met uh, I finally met Savon in person. And that guy was like <laughs> way more like bubbly and like goofy and just like excited that I've that I've ever seen him on like because usually if I, you know if I watch him on the, like his podcast and stuff, he's like uh, he comes off kind of serious, like a little more serious, you know, like a little. I mean, I know he, I know he jokes around and stuff too, but he he just comes off as more of like a serious person. Man, in person he was. <laughs> Just a little goofball kid. It's funny. It was pretty funny. And yeah, not tall. Not a tall man. Not tall at all. But yeah, it was cool to meet him. Um, well, you know, all, all the usual suspects. Uh, they're all cool. It's cool to see everybody. I'm trying to think. Nothing else really like. Met a lot, met a lot of peeps. Um, hey, anybody notice like the Noble? Noble like uh, sponsorship? I For one, I didn't see any. In the years past, they used to put like their pic, like the athletes' pictures around the arena. I didn't see that. Uh, Noble usually has like a big ass like screen televising the events in their tent. Didn't see that this year. And I'm always like, I'm always disappointed in their inventory of stuff. They always let me down. But that wasn't any different this year either. It was like, man, they always, I don't know if they just run out of stuff on the first day. Cause I usually get there because I'm never there like the, you know, what, when did, when did it start? Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. I didn't get there until uh, my first day I showed up was Thursday. Um, I don't know if they just run out of stuff or what, but I'm always disappointed with their booth, man. Always disappointed. And I, you know, I love me some Noble, but I know this is their last year's or title sponsor too. I don't know if they're going to re-up. I could see it being like tier or maybe rogue tier or rogue CrossFit games. Um, Man, it'd be it'd be amazing if they somehow got like Nike, something like that. I don't know if they would do it though, but that would be amazing. Uh, props to props to the CrossFit team for landing ESPN too. That's great. The more eyes, the better, right? That's like little steps like that to grow the sport. I mean, I know I know they've been on ESPN before, but it's been a while. So, 
That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, all right, let's jump into the men and women that are kind of like, kind of just made me raise an eyebrow. I think it goes without saying, Justin Medeiros. What's up, dude? What's up with that? I know, like, <laughs> I know I jokingly talk crap on that guy on my podcast because I'm always like, I've had an ass full of Justin. I want a new winner. Uh, but he, total nice guy. No, I, I've, I've always said that too when I'm busting his chops. Super nice guy. I don't want like, <laughs> I'm not necessarily rooting against the guy. Um, and so even though I wanted to do winner, I didn't want like the, I didn't want the champ. It's weird. I'm like, I'm a weirdo. Even though I wanted to do winner, I didn't want the champ to fall off that much. <laughs> you know, I kind of wanted him to be like still in the top five. Uh, it's just weird. You know, like, you know, he took two spills, uh, you know, on the first event. By the way, where the hell is the video of that? Has anybody seen any video of that guy taking his spills? All these freaking cameras I just got done talking about. All these freaking cameras and nobody has footage of uh, Justin eating shit. Apparently, I was talking to Savan about it. He said he was right next to it, right when it happened. But he was talking to somebody. He didn't have his camera out and he wasn't rolling. <sighs> I want to see it. I want to see Justin eat ass. And that means crashing the bike, not literally eat. Well, I mean, if you guys got video of Madero's eating ass too, I'll, I mean, I'll watch it. <laughs> I will watch it. Yeah. I'm like that. But, uh, yeah, finished 13th. And I don't know if like, you know, these, these are all just speculation crap, but I've heard, I heard he potentially could have had a concussion, which that would make sense. Well, it's weird. It would make sense to a certain degree, but I'm also like, you know, if he's hurt, he's hurt, but it's weird that he was like, you know, he had a bad performance in the first event, right? Cause he crashed second event was even worse, but then like he, you know, he did well. He did like, what did he do? Like a second I'm looking at right now. Let me scroll down here. Yeah. I got a, let me see here. He didn't do. Yeah. So 20th on the bike, 37th on the next event, but then he got second, seventh and third, right? Three times. Those are three pretty good places in a row. So it's like, if he's hurt, then you think you just have, you think you just, uh, you know, perform bad all the time. So it's weird that he, you know, performed bad on some events and he performed well on other events. So it's, it's hard to kind of figure out what the heck's wrong with him. But I did hear that. I did hear he got a potentially got a concussion and that he was only looking out one eye or he can only see out of one eye on the, uh, on the pig chipper, that event two, test two, whatever event two, test two. Uh, so I don't know. Not I know we saw, everybody saw like his big old mark across his chest. Uh, that looked kind of bad, but I don't know. I know he, I know he, um, got tangled up with Lazar on the bike and that's what crashed. But I think he crashed twice with Lazar. I think Laz him and Lazar crashed, crashed twice. Again, there's no damn video. I don't understand how they, nobody has any video. If you guys have video or, or you know if somebody has video, freaking please tag me in it because I want to see it. I figure out how many people were there. You think you'd, you'd see the freaking, um, you'd, you'd eventually see it. Uh, Colton Mertens. I also want to highlight 18th. I feel like that guy is kind of underrated. I know Savon loves that dude, but man, for, you know, his size and everything, <laughs> he's, he's a tiny dude and he's rocking 18th place. And I know he won an event. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to like point out or highlight Colton Mertens. I think that guy's amazingly more fit than, than he gets credit for. Um, Joni, Yoni, Yoni, Yoni Koski, Yoni Koski, Yoni, Yoni Koski, man, guys, I'm not good with words. I, I suck. I suck with speaking. I know I've heard this guy's name a thousand times. And for some reason, I can't remember how to pronounce it. Yoni Koski, Yoni Koski. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways, he finished six overall. And I believe this is his 10th games. And uh, again, I just want to highlight him because I feel like he does not get his due. This guy's like a, he's bordering on like on an all-time great. And that dude, I feel like he doesn't hardly ever get talked about. He all, you know, he's always gets props for, or he always gets credit or, or rightfully so, because he usually wins like the swimming events and the long distance stuff. But um, the dude's a freak, man. I just wish there's more, I don't know why it's, it's weird. It's weird how some people get a lot of notoriety, notoriety and other people don't. But yeah, Yoni Koski, Yoni Koski. Gosh dang it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Dude's a stud. 
Uh, also, some guy who got screwed right in the rectum. Uh, Yelly Hosty? <laughs> Yelly, Yelly Hosty. Hosty. Uh, the rookie kid. What did he finish? Didn't he get 10th? Let me see. Yeah, he got finished 10th. And uh, who's the, who is the young girl who got Jacob Hepter's girl that got Olivia Kerstetter? She got Rookie of the Year. She finished uh, 16th, but Yelly Hosty, I know that's not fucking right. He finished 10th. What's up with that, CrossFit? What's up with that? Dude was a stud. I know. Let's see. He won the, didn't he win the 5K? Let me look. I'm looking right now. So he got a fur. Oh. Let's see. He got six on the bike. 30th, yeah, 34th on the ski bag. That's pretty good. Let's see. He's got, yeah, first on the 5K, a.k.a. 4.56K. Uh, third on the muscle up logs. Man, he did pretty good. And then he finished uh, 17th and 7th on the echo thruster. Damn. Anyways, a little stud muffin. Guy kind of got screwed. And the biggest disappointment of the weekend. God dang it, Jake Douglas. Finally, by the way, thank God I can pronounce that guy's name. Jake Douglas, freaking AKA Brock Lesnar. What the hell, dude? What the hell, Jake Douglas? Dude finished 38th. <laughs> by the way, 38th out of 39 because there was only 39 athletes. 38th, Jake Douglas? Good God, dude got. So out of, let's see, competed in six events, and here's five out of the six. You got 39th, so last. 38th, second to last. 31st, 33rd, and then and a 36th. Dude, you got way too much muscle to be rocking those scores. Come on, dude. And uh, Matty, Matty Frazier and the HWPO crew. Come on, turn that guy into a freak. That guy is a genetic specimen. Anyways, I, was, <laughs> I think somebody, oh, I don't know if you guys listened to it. Some of the podcasts, I was having people do uh, crazy, crazy predictions. And Armin Hammer, he predicted, <laughs> he went on a limb. And he said Jake Douglas was going to potentially win the games. Not even close, Armin. Not even effing close. Uh, the ladies, uh, I just want to shout out Ariel Lowen. God, how do you, she has to be one of the most likable people in the whole sport. She's got to be that lady always smiling, always sweet, like just the best. She's just like the best of the best. And her, <laughs> her husband's awesome. I was, uh, I was next to him a lot because, you know, I'm down there on the, uh, you know, I got the, I'm better than you bracelet on. And, uh, he would always say like, um. It, like the way he would cheer for her is always like in compliment form, you know, like you look fantastic, uh, Ariel, you are so awesome. Ariel, 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 you're so awesome. You are so, you're so strong. Look how quick you're moving, Ariel. You're quicker than everybody. Like that's how he's cheering her on. It's freaking awesome. Anyways, super adorable. Um, also want to highlight Alexis Raptus finished six. Oh man. Big fan of her too. She's freaking rad. Uh, she was rocking the leader jersey there for a while. Uh, I'm thinking like I might. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think like early prediction. Early prediction for my next year's winner. I think I might go Alexis Raptus. Mm-hmm. That's right. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about taking Alexis Raptus right now. Uh, like a whole year out. I like. I like what I'm seeing with her. She's like. I think she has huge improvement if she just keeps getting better, which I'm assuming she's going to be. She's gonna be a freaking wrecking crew uh katrin seventh place from not making it or not qualifying last year that's freaking you know props to her katrin kick butt daniel brandon finished ninth is that a disappointment i don't know i mean the ninth fittest female in the world i feel like that's pretty awesome i guess the only reason that it's a disappointment because some people are picking her to win but um i don't know there's there's just something Something missing in her game. Can't really tell what it is. Obviously, her gymnastics are phenomenal, but you know, and, and I didn't catch the whole thing either. But I heard there's some, I heard there was some uh, crap going down during the like Olympic Olympic lifting event. But I didn't really catch all that, so uh, I gotta wait and see some of the behind the scenes stuff. But I get, I know she dropped an f bomb, and I think 
Dave Castro was mad at her because she was dropping f bombs on ESPN. I think Castro had to like scold her or something. I don't really know, but I don't know why she was. Um, I don't think she was lifting as heavy as she could. I don't, it was weird. I don't really know the whole thing, but anyway, she finished ninth. I guess that's a disappointment. I don't know how, but I guess it kind of is. Uh, Annie Thor's daughter finished thirteenth. I think she, I know she was disappointed. Uh, I can't remember who's, I think it might've been Craig Ritchie's behind the scenes, but she was just saying that there was something off this year. She doesn't really know what it was, but something was just off. Um, I wonder if she's going to retire. Cause is she, is she 10 years in? Has she been, has she gone to the games 10 years? I think she has. Uh, I can see that. And I would almost say like, you know, I don't know. This is just initial reaction. I would say probably you sh- she should because all these young girls coming up like Alexis Raptus, um, you know, Emma Lawson, uh, even like Olivia Kerstetter, you know, there's like, there's like six or seven core and you got, you got Mal too, Mal coming back. You got six or seven like core young girls, um, that I feel like are just going to be like kind of dominating for like a long time. So it's be very challenging for Annie to, um, you know, maintain that elite level of uh, fitness because, you know, she's getting a little older. I think like I said, she's like 10 years, 10 years in. So it's hard to, hard to do that. I don't know how old she is. How old is she? Let's Google it. How old is Annie? How old is Annie? Annie Thoris Delta. Any guesses? She's 33. What a geezer. Well, she's 33, I guess in CrossFit age, that's old. Tia is 30. Katrin's 30. Camille LeBlanc Bazanet is 34. Yeah, you know, 33, so she'll be 34 next year during the games. I mean, it's just hard to, if you're trying to compete with like 20 year olds, 21 year olds, 22 year olds, we know the, the older crew gets it. We know how, we know how that is. So, um, by the way, Annie Thor's daughter, probably my all-time favorite female athlete. I freaking love Annie. She's the best. Um, and the last lady I want to point out is Amanda Barnhart finished 24th. Man, I always – I don't know why. I always feel like she's going to do better. And, I always, and like, I always think she's going to do better with, like, these strong – like, these, uh, you know, like, the heavyweight. Kind of like how – you know when Laura Horvath kind of dominates, like, the strength events? I always feel like Amanda Barnhart should be, like, right – next to her, like, you know, finishing second or, you know, if Laura's winning it, then I think, and I just, man, I don't know what it is about Amanda. I feel like she just kind of doesn't ever, uh, reach her top potential. And, and I, and I know her, one of her most recent Instagram posts about her, uh, um, you know, adopting a kid. And that's why like these last thing, it just kind of happened too. So her time has been occupied with that. So I get it, but man, even in the past, I always feel like, man, I just feel like she should dominate more than she does. But, ooh, how about that? How old is Amanda Barnhart? Any guesses? Any guesses? Any guesses? Probably should learn how to spell it first. Gosh dang it. Amanda Barnhart. How old is... Um, <laughs> I spelled Bamhart. Bamhart. Uh, she's 31. She just went to HWPO. Okay, I think she's got another year or two, right? I mean, if you're if you're rocking, uh, if you're going off the old Annie, Annie of that man, you know, Annie uh, career, we'll see. I, I do like Amanda Barnard. She's I, I, honestly, I don't really like dislike. I don't think I dislike any CrossFit athlete. They're all super nice. I'm, like I don't know how it'd be hard to dislike somebody. There's really not a villain. You know, everyone's super nice. Uh, so, anyways, those are the guys and men and women that are kind of kind of caught my attention let me uh let me go through some of these some of these events and we'll just kind of i'll just weigh in real fast let's see so day one the bike ride uh yeah freaking somebody give me some video of justin crash i don't want to see it and then i don't know if anybody, did you guys see emma carrie crash it's weird like she she wiped out she went over the fence and i feel like that was in the, that was lap one too like right from the beginning a couple couple of minutes into it and i feel like she was just like well I lost this event. She, I feel like she was just coasting the rest, the rest of the time. Uh, but yeah, Yona Koski 
won that one, and Emma Lawson won that one too. The Pig Chipper, uh, Roman won that one. Laura, Roman and Laura both won that one. Lazar Dukic got second, hell yeah. Oh yeah, Ariel Lowen got second, hell yeah. Inverted Melody, Medley, Inverted Medley. Hey, are pullovers easy? I'm trying to think, like they don't, they, I mean, they de these athletes definitely made them look easy. I mean, next time I go to the gym, I'm going to try those things. But I, man, they seemed easy. Am I just naive? I feel like those are, those do not look hard. Especially if you get like a big, like kipping swing. Man, I feel like it's, I don't know. If any, I think the, the most challenging thing is not getting dizzy. Cause like some of them are going unbroken. What was it? 16 reps, right? 16 reps. I think it was, um, one of the most coolest thing there was Justin's freaking amazing save. Man, he freaking that was huge. I, after he you know he went down the line, did the did the pullovers, then come then starting to come back on that first uh, first little section back. He got on that fourth that final pad, and he oh man, he almost fell. But she, he freaking it was amazing save. Because I think if he fell, man, he might have like because I think he finished. Yeah, he did. He finished second. If he fell, he probably would have got. I mean, it'd been close. It would just been a lot harder because he kind of his heat. He pretty much dominated his heat, so that was amazing. And then, uh, so the at the end of day one, it was Roman one for the men. It was Roman one. Jay Crouch was two, and Spencer Pancheck was third. Then on the women's side, it was Alexis Raptus, then Emily Rolf, Rolf, and uh, Ariel Lowen was three at the end of day one. Day two. Oh, by the way, I ran the five k. I know what an idiot. Again, running sucks. Running absolutely sucks. That was a hard 5K. I should, let me back up. That was a hard 4.56K. The um, the uphill stuff, and then like there's a part right after you come out of the RV park and you start to go up that little hill and it's all like wood chippy gravel stuff. Man, freaking challenging. Super challenging. It was not easy. It was not an easy run. But uh, I did it. And props to me. My only goal was to not stop. I just wanted to run the whole time without stopping, which I did. So props to me. And I fucking hated it. God, I hate running. Um, but yeah, T.O. was there. That was cool. Uh, Butter Bros were there. Freaking Dan Bailey was there. I'm trying to think who else was there. Uh, oh, I think Julian Alvarez was there. Um, who am I forgetting? Forgetting some, but some people. Oh, freaking what's his name? The CEO dude. He was there. It was cool. It was a cool little community event. That's like the only time I really can get up for like a run like that is when it's like a a thing, you know, like an ordeal. And I'm like more inclined to do it or somewhat ex somewhat excited to actually do it. First uh, event of that day was the alpaca redo. Did you guys see Alex Gazan Gazan's shoe <laughs> slipped off? It was kind of funny. It's funny, like, the, I think it kind of slipped off. Then she, like, tried to take him off, and it wasn't, like, I think she couldn't get any traction. She had to put him back on. It was fun. It was, it was like, weird. It was a weird thing. And I think her, was it her boyfriend or a coach or somebody was, like, <laughs> screaming, what the hell are you doing? Uh Oh, by the way, Patty V's hands, gross. Did you guys see Pat Vellner's hands after that, after that uh, event? Gross. Super gross. You can check his instagram stories right now because it is nasty i want how do you how do you keep competing when your hands are like that this is how i know i'm a big old wuss face because i'm like dude i mean I'm like i'm out I, don't, I guess i can't compete anymore his hands are his hands are gnarly they're like just layers of skin were just burned off from the from the rope climb <clears throat> and that was only day two and he had like what was it that was a fifth event of the whole week no it ain't that right fourth event of the whole weekend so i'm like damn it's always more impressive to see that than know how he, he fin ended up finishing second stud muffin uh alpaca redo roman won that jack farlow got dose uh emma tall won it on the female side and laura horvath by the way I don't. I know it's probably the right way to say it. I just don't like it. I don't like Kiki Dixon and Joshy G's pronunciation of Horva, Horvath, Horvath. Speaking of that, do we? Do we? Here's a vent session. 
Nothing. Kiki Dixon, very sweet lady. Joshy G, very cool dude. Nothing, nothing bad about it. I'm just, okay, separate that now. The experience of the talking going over the workouts, I don't think I like it, guys. I don't think I like it. It's too much gosh dang talking. I wish they'd crank the music up some more and then just like, let me watch these people work out. The constant like talking and narration of what's going on. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm kind of over it. Okay. That was it. <laughs> that was my whole thing. I just wish there was less talking by the MCs and more bass hitting by the DJ. Ski bag was the second event of day two. Uh, oh, you know what's cool? Did you see how some of those athletes were kind of, I'm sorry, guys, my <coughs> kind of, <clears throat> damn, I'm kind of sick. My throat sucks ass. <clears throat> but did you guys see the freaking, did you see how some of these athletes were starting on the ski erg thing? They were doing like one at a time, doosh, 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 like that. That was kind of awesome. I like that. How they're how they were initially getting that skier started. I'm gonna have to try that little. It was like alternating poles. They'd go left arm, right arm, left arm, maybe like you know, three or four poles on each side, and then they then they'd go into your traditional, you know, how you really uh, usually pull on the on the skier. Um, yeah, that was one of those things. This is right where because Roman was dominating, absolutely dominating this competition. And that was the first time it was started to see like it slipped just a little bit because he I was could have sworn he was like in the lead at the very end. And I think like right right in the last handful of reps, he, he either failed or he dropped the uh dropped the sandbag. And then um there's like three people that passed him right at the very end. And I was like, damn, dude, because he was like if he if he would have just finished, he probably would have got like a a second or a third place finish. And it was just been like continuing dominating, but that was the first little, what's the saying? Like niche, niche in his armor kind of thing. But uh, Colton Mertens won that event and Laura Horvath won it on the female side. Uh, Helena was the final event of the day. Yeah. Ellie, Ellie Turner was, man, then she, she finished by, you know, the very last set or the very last rep when she got time cap, she fell off that pull up bar and like landed around on her butt. That did not look like that felt good and or helped her situation. But uh Jeffrey Adler won hell uh Helena and this is where like like I said, like he Roman <clears throat> I do apologize, guys. Sorry if I know it's like super annoying to clear my throat. Uh but Roman's a uh, ski bag uh, mishap there at the end, and then the following event, Jeff Adler won. It's like this is where like the the tides were starting to change right here. It's like you start to see it, but even after that, at the end of day three or day two, Roman had a hundred point lead on Adler, and you're like, man, Roman's not going to f this up, right? <laughs> Roman's not going to f this up. He's got a hundred point lead. Uh, so Roman was one at the end of day one, and then it was Adler two, Chandler Smith three. And then on the female side, Emma Lawson was one, Alexis Raptus was two, and Laura Horvath was three. God dang it. Sorry, guys. Frick. Um, let's see. Day three, Saturday, started with a 5K. 5K. Asterisk. 5K. Yelly Holstey won, and Emily Rolf won on the female side. The second workout of the day was intervals. That's how, like those box jump things. Uh, by the way, Yoni Hoski. Holy crap. That dude looked like he was just floating over those boxes. If you guys get a chance, go watch uh, Go watch him do the, the the high, like the box jump overs. Dude looks smooth. Freaking ninja. But uh, Patty V won that event, and Emma Lawson won it for the ladies. And then it closed out Saturday night with the, with the heavy-ass barbell. Jack Farlow, damn, it's a strong ass dude. He won that event, and uh, Laura Horvath won on the ladies' side. So uh, at the end of day two, Roman had a hundred point lead, but at the end of day three, he only had a thirteen point lead. Jeffrey Adler was closing the gap. So it was Roman one at the end of day three. It was Roman one, Adler two, and Chandler Smith three. 
and then Velner was four, and Fikowski was five. Uh, into day three for the ladies was Emma Lawson, Laura Horvath was two, Ariel Lowen was three, Alexis Raptus was four, and Gabby Magawa was five. Final day, the muscle-up log, which was probably the dopest event by the whole the whole weekend, or the whole competition. That was a dope event. I love that kind of stuff. That was just, it looked cool. Uh, you know, it was, it was one heat going at a time, or each, you know, each for the ladies was just one, one heat, but that was awesome uh, for the men too, one heat. Um, yeah, this, that was very creative. Loved it. Uh, Jeffrey Aller won that one. I think after, after he won that, he got the, he took lead, took over the lead. Yeah, he did. He took over the lead. And then Laurel Horvath won that one too for the ladies. I'm trying to think if there's anything that kind of, oh man, I don't know if you guys saw Alexis Raptus. There, she, <laughs> I think it was the final log. <clears throat> it was the final log, but I don't think it was the red sandbag, but man, she had it. She had it up there and she'd go to, she went to go try to push it over the log and it fell down. She cleaned it back up. Pushed it, and it fell off again for the second time. And I want to say she did it again, and it fell a third time. And it wasn't until her fourth attempt when she picked it up. She finally got it to roll over the top of the log. I felt bad for her. It's like, damn. When I see that stuff, I'm like, that's that sucks. It, well, plus it's the final day, and I'm like, how are you? I'm like mind blowing. That's like I'm, I, I've I've said this many a times. I'm just mind blowing by the um the volume that these athletes can do, and still like. Just keep pushing on because I'm like, I would be so done. I'd be like, all I want to do is just lay in bed. I don't want to get up and keep working out. Uh, the second event that day was the parallel bar pull up. Uh, did you guys see Brent Fikowski's kind of re reverse grip on the on the double unders? Kind of funky. I wanted to try that. Oh, there was no, I was just thinking about this. There was no crossovers, were there? Was there? There wasn't, right? I'm think I'm I'm quiet because I'm thinking right now. I don't think there was crossovers, huh? What the hell? I could have sworn there's to be. It's weird. I, there was no crossovers and no swimming events this year. What the hell's going on? Anyways, his rollover. Oh, because he did the heavy, huh? They did the heavy double unders. I'm, I'm really shocked they didn't do crossovers. I guess they didn't. They do that in the. They did it in. Did they do it in semis? I can't remember. Or the qualifying round. I can't remember. Anyways. Bukowski had a reverse grip on those double unders. I thought that was kind of cool. I want to try that just to see if I can do it. But I think they asked him afterwards, though. He's all, yeah, there's really no benefit in doing it. And I'm like, there's no benefit in doing it. Why in the hell are you doing it then? There's got to be some type of benefit. Don't tell me there's not a benefit, freaking professor. There was a, there's the reason why you're doing it. So I'm going to try. I want to at least try it and see if I can do it. But Fikowski won it. Uh, Laura Horvath won it on the female side. And then final event. Um... Oh, by the way, that's where that was where uh, we all found out the parallel bar pull ups where we found out where freaking Roman broke his freaking foot. Dang it. Man, that was shaping up to be quite an awesome finale. It was going to go right down to the wire, too. Poor freaking man. Broke my freaking heart, Roman. Especially his little speech, too, as I talked about earlier. Holy moly. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so Brent Fikowski, Laura. Okay, then the final event. Echo Thruster, uh, Dallin Pepper won it, and Olivia Kerstetter won the Kerstetter won the um, won it for the female side. Isn't she like seventeen, by the way? What a freaking she's gonna be a freak. Oh, and by the way, people are booing because they stopped the event early because Roman was still <laughs> on the first bike, just using his arms only. And then, like, I think he put up his hands like he wanted to finish. But listen, Roman, I love you, I appreciate your effort. <clears throat> we just let you have your moment the workout before. I don't want to sit there and watch that dude. Cause I don't think there was a time cap. If I recall right, I don't know if there was a time cap on that workout. Maybe there was, there probably was, but I don't know if there, I couldn't recall if there was or not. Regardless, I'm not going to, I don't want to watch you like struggled by the way. What are you going to do? You're going to get off and do thrusters. You're going to do a one legged thruster. Come on. I'm glad I'm, I'm pro I'm on CrossFit side here. I'm glad they didn't freaking. I'm glad they didn't let him keep finishing. So when it's all said and done, Jeffrey Adler, your new fittest man on on Earth. Laura Horvath, your new fittest woman on Earth. All all in all, I thought it was a, I thought it was a pretty awesome CrossFit Games. Nothing really, 
I will say this though, nothing really like stood out to me. Like, you know how last year they had the Capitol event? That was like a that, oh, that's just one of those events where I was like, holy crap, that's gonna go down. So there was there was nothing there was none of those type of events um this year. So it was like not that the the programming wasn't bad. I thought the program was great, but it was just kind of like nothing special either. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing really that special that happened. Um, but it was cool. I, I I thought it was great. I thought if you're looking at it from like we're trying to test to find the fittest on earth, I thought all those tests were amazing. Um, so I'm not saying the programming was bad. It just was nothing. There's just nothing really special about it. And I wish there was. I always like when there's like a little something, something special, you know. Like, hey, we're going to put you all on a bus. We're going to drive you to the ranch. You're going to run a 5K. Uh, that was like, that's kind of cool. Or run the, run the, uh, run the hill or on the trail. So I like when they do stuff like that, little mix up stuff, but there's nothing like that this year. Anywho, great times. Can't wait for next year already. Uh, can't wait for Rogue. Um, again, talk a lot of crap on Madero's, but I still root for the guy. He's, he's a very sweet kid. And I'm kind of a bum that he uh, kind of had a kind of had the the weekend that he had, or the week I should say he had. So we'll hope it bounce back. It'd be, it'd be interesting how he's gonna if he you know if he goes to Rogue, what's gonna happen there? What if he comes out and wins Rogue? I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be a couple of different things. He's gonna come out and win Rogue and be like, okay, maybe it's just a weird little fluke. But what if he comes out and gets like, you know, eighth place, sixth place, and be like, oh crap, what's wrong with Justin? So I don't know. Well, it's, it's only time will tell with what's uh, what's going on with Justin. You know, he's got his YouTube channel and stuff, and we'll probably find out what, what really happened or what's going on. Maybe it, was just, maybe it was just a bad performance. I don't know. We'll see what it is. I love you all for listening. Super gratitude. Um, it's just an absolute pleasure to uh, speak into your ear holes, uh, and I never take it for granted. Always say hi to me whenever you see me. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, well, um, I'm going to go on the Savant's podcast again, uh, I think in a week or two, I think we're going to talk about the, talk about the CrossFit stuff again and see what else we got coming up. Uh, I'm trying to think what I have coming up as far as guests, uh, thinking about, that. oh, uh, freaking, um, the wall street weightlifter dude, Graciano, that dude's hopping on the podcast soon. So check out for that. Always got some rad merch, fluffyduckshop.com. Feel free to check those out. I'm always dropping some new shirts there. Um, again, I just thank thank you guys so much. Um, you guys mean you guys mean a lot to me, and uh, I hope I continue to bring you fun, enjoyment, and laughs. Okie dokie. Catch you on the flippity flip. <laughs>